This video will cover using AutoCAD architecture to draft a floor plan. In this particular example, I'm going to draft the first floor of this two-story home. It's a, kind of a generic plan, but by using the plan that's given here and the dimensions, we can uh, very quickly uh, draft it up in AutoCAD architecture, hopefully in around 15 minutes or so. Now, I may not have time to get to the stairs and some of the detail items. This video does assume that you already know the basics of using the tools in AutoCAD architecture. So if you uh, are not to that level, you might want to review uh, my AutoCAD architecture basic videos on walls, doors and windows, and uh, some of the other kind of starter videos. So the uh, I go through this floor plan idea to kind of give you an idea of how these tools can be applied. Because when I just show you how to use the wall tools somewhat uh, simply, it doesn't always show you an easy way and how they're applied to a real project. So I like to give more of a concrete example. Now, generally speaking, when you're drawing a plan like this, you start with the outer perimeter or exterior walls and then kind of work your way to the interior. Most of the time, the dimensions for the exterior are given um, by using the exterior dimensions, meaning the 51-4 dimension horizontally it's going from the outside corners of the building, not the inside corners. And that's the normally how architects dimension plans. And uh, the same is true for the vertical here, which is 38, 30 feet, 8 inches. When you're working with a wall type that's asymmetrical like this one is, because this one has gypsum board on furring strips on the interior face, then you want to keep your justification typically on the exterior and then work in a clockwise direction when it comes to drawing the outer perimeter of the building. So that's how I'm going to start. So I'm going to get this out of the way. And I'm going to use my uh, CMU8 furring wall style in order to do the exterior walls. Generally speaking, you always want to start a plan at the zero, zero point in your model space. The easiest way to do that is to start your wall or line tool and then uh, type zero comma zero for placing that wall. Now I can uh, get that kind of in my screen, so pan over to find where that went. Now, just uh, before I get started, I wanted to point out the fact that once you get used to drawing plans here in AutoCAD architecture, that doesn't really make any sense to drawing them in AutoCAD anymore, um, because it's going to be much faster. So even though I have all the videos in how to use AutoCAD, um, I don't really recommend you use it to draw a simple plan because it's so tedious when it comes to drawing two lines and placing hatch and things like that in order to show the plan. Nevertheless, a lot of firms and companies still do that because they don't know how to use AutoCAD architecture properly. So it's still valuable skills to have, especially because anybody that knows how to use AutoCAD architecture should be able to draw a plan in AutoCAD if you need to, um, because it kind of goes back to just using those core tools. So I still have them. I still have all those videos because they're important skills to have, and you should have the ability to do that if necessary. But if you want to draw um, architecture, it doesn't really make any sense to use AutoCAD, frankly, if you have AutoCAD architecture available to you. So I started my wall, and then I placed it at zero zero, and now I'm going to move in a vertical direction and type in the length in that direction, which is 30 feet eight. So now I'm going to continue clockwise and do my 51.4 and then go down and do my 38. So all I'm doing is aiming the mouse in the direction I want to go and then typing in that distance. And then in this direction it's 13.4 and then I go up 1 and then over 9.4 and then down 1 and then over 28.8 so there's my exterior perimeter. So now I need to start placing the interior walls. So when you look at a plan, a lot of times there, um, the dimensions to the interior walls do not go from both sides. And an example here is this horizontal string that says 21, 6, 4, 2, and 12, 8. See, there's no horizontal dimension across the office. So that's going to dictate that I start laying out the walls from the left side of the plan rather than the right. And the dimensions are laid out that way very intentionally. So it's good for me to follow that uh, general idea in uh, how I lay out the walls to match how the dimensions are shown on the plan. So I'll do 21, 6, and then the 4, 2, and then the 12, 8. 
Now in this case, I'm gonna actually use reference lines and that's partially because the interior walls are a different wall type than the exterior wall. So I don't wanna just copy or offset. I could copy or offset and then change the wall type, that would work. Um, but my personal preference is to do a reference line to locate the O-snaps and then I can place the walls afterwards. So I'm gonna draw myself a quick reference line here. You can use X lines if you want, uh, whichever is easier for you. And then I'll copy this over to 21.6. And then I'll copy that new line over the four foot two. And then I'll do this one, the 12.8. So now I have those kind of guidelines set up. I'll know where the walls go. Now I'm going to also do the same vertically, um, meaning do the horizontal line and copy that down. Um, by the dimensions that are on the plan. So the vertical dimensions are four, nine and a half, and then three, eight and a half, and then five feet. So I kind of have this grid of lines, but that's going to allow me to uh, draw the plan fairly quickly. Now the uh, size of the office vertically is given by the one from the bottom. So I can give that as 12 feet. So now I have a line there as well. So I just uh, copied lines for these dimensions, four, nine and a half, three, eight and a half, five, and then I went 12 up over here in order to get that line placed. Now, when I get ready to draw the walls for this, I just have to be cautious on which side the thickness is going to. So my justification is very important so that the thickness is going to the proper side of these lines. So I'll do stud four for my interior, and then, uh, for example, when I look at this 21.6, the dimension's touching the left side of the wall, right there. So I need to make sure that my thickness goes to the right side of my white line. And then I'll know that my uh, wall is properly placed. I'm going to actually start the wall up here at the top, so I'll make my justification right in order to make the thickness go on to the right side. So I'm going to tap Shift to flip my justification around. And now I can basically trace um, these three white lines and now that wall is done and I can then come and do the same thing here so I'm looking at the plan at the same time to see that the thickness is going to the proper side the PDF plan I mean so there's this wall and now this wall actually has the dimension going to the top so I need to hit shift again to flip myself down to the bottom so now my thickness the is going to the correct side of the white line based upon how the dimensions touch the PDF. So it's always important to look and see is the tick mark touch. Um, see over here it touches the top and that's why I had to switch it. On here it touches the left. So I controlled my justification with the shift key to match that as I was drawing. When you think about your justification, remember you're looking down the wall as you draw. So sometimes it will appear backwards in terms of left right compared to what you're seeing on the monitor. Now I'm going to erase these lines. and uh, that part is done. So now I need to get the closet drawn over here on the side and then the kitchen walls. I'm probably going to do just the first floor on this for now. So now there's a vertical line. I can copy that over 610. So that's where the closet wall is gonna go. Um, the kitchen area actually starts uh, flush with this corner on the interior. Um, but it's dimensioned from here vertically. So I'm going to copy that up 710 and then 36. And then horizontally, so this is the one wall because it goes from the corner. This needs to go over 2, 3, and then to the left, 2 feet. So I think that should be enough lines. I'm just gonna do a couple fillets here so that I get real good corners, uh, O-snap corners. And then that'll be a little easier for when I do my stud tool. So now stud four, and then I'm going from there and I want the thickness to go on the right side, so that's correct. So there's that one. And then now I go from this corner up to here.
So I'm looking at the PDF to verify the thickness each time on which side. All right, so that should be right. Now I can erase my white lines. You can see I make the white lines longer than necessary because it makes it very easy to select and erase them. Oh, and this wall actually needs to extend down because that's the closet and then there's going to be a door there as well. So that looks good. I think all my walls on the first floor are done. So it looks just like this. Now I'm ready to place doors. So most of these are three feet single swing hinge doors. So I can go to my doors tab, hit my hinge single, but I need to think ahead a little here on that, where they're located relative to the wall corners. And you can see there, there's a dimension that says four inch typical door offset. And that dimension is given to the uh, outer edge of the frame. And the offset is gonna go to the inner edge of the frame. So I need to set my offset to six inches so that that'll work correctly. So let me zoom out again here. So I'll hit my hinge single. I want to double check my settings. See, I need to fix the size. So it's three feet, uh, seven feet tall. And then my offset needs to be set to six. And then that's going to result in a four inch offset that matches the PDF. Again, because the offset to setting goes to the inner edge of the frame, but the dimension on the plan is to the outer edge of the frame and the frame is two inches. So now I can select that wall and place this one here. I can flip my mouse back and forth as I draw in order to get it in or out. So I'll, it's quick to place. I'll go back and fix this one swing up afterwards. I'll just place that in now. Um, not all of these are three feet. I actually forgot a wall um, between the powder room and the mechanical room. So let me copy this line down. Actually, I need to copy one down from right there, 410, or excuse me, 38 and a half. So let's copy that down, 38 and a half. Whoops, except I hit enter and missed the half. So I'm going to move it down a half an inch now. So I hit enter on accident. Okay, so there's the line for that. There's the wall that I forgot. So now I can go back to my door tool and I'm going to change this to center for the mechanical room here. And the doors in the powder room in the closet are a little smaller. Those are two foot eight, I believe. So I'm going to change that. And then this can be centered here. And this needs to have my offset center turned or my offset turned back on. So there's that closet door uh, that actually needs to swing out so I can hit my grip there. And then this I'm going to change to 45 degrees. And what I usually do is uh, the doors that are normally closed, if this was a real building, uh, these doors would normally be closed 99% of the time. Then I put the swing angle at 45 instead of 90. And it kind of gives an idea of that, just kind of a subtle idea of that door is normally closed. All right, so now hinge double. Uh, for my closet here and I'm going to make this six foot and then I want it to be centered and that's already turned on so I can do that and there's the center actually that looks a little large I'm going to make that maybe five eight instead of six feet now if this was um, a real project there are door numbers on here and there's a door schedule so I could refer to the door number then go to the door schedule and see the size that would what I would normally do I'm just uh, kind of showing you the quick steps here so you get the idea. The pantry door uh, is going to be 2-6. And then I am going to just move this afterwards to get it in the right position. So I can flip it this direction and then move it down so that the frame is pushed down as far as possible. It actually is still a little large to have any shelves in there, so let's make it 2 feet. And then I'll move it down again. See, now I have space for shelves in the pantry there. And this door is normally closed, so I'm going to make the swing angle 45. You can see why it becomes very useful to have the properties palette open all the time. 
and then you can put it on auto hide if you uh, want it to get out of your way when you're not using it. So the last thing would be to kind of just finish off uh, millwork and appliances and cabinets and all those types of things. Now the design center has a lot of uh, handy tools for that. I just hit DC for design center and uh, I'm on the AEC content tab. So under food service, you can get dishwasher range, uh, refrigerator, and these are 3D blocks. So I can uh, bring in a standard range and then place that um, anywhere I want. Click and drag to pull it in. And then you uh, click to determine the rotation angle. Obviously I can rotate this around with the rotate command in order to get it rotating the right way. Refrigerator works the same way. Very easy to click and drag. Um, there are some uh, cabinets in here under casework. Uh, which is under furnishing if you wanted 3d cabinetry in order to kind of build your kitchen your other alternative would be to do custom 3d modeling if you really want this to all be 3d what a lot of people do is they use the autocad architecture wall door and window tools to lay out the plan but then they will draw some of the interior details with lines like the cabinetry so it kind of depends on what you're planning to do with this if i'm just doing this for a plan then there's no reason to do 3D cabinets, and I can just draw with lines. If you're planning to do uh, perspectives or sections or elevations from the 3D model, then you would want to have 3D cabinets probably, so then you can either use the design center or do some custom 3D modeling. So uh, let me uh, add some windows here as well. So I'm going to do double casement, and most of the windows on this floor are four feet. So I'm going to close the design center there, go to the properties palette, four feet, uh, that's fine. I want my um, offset to be unconstrained right now. I'm going to just drop these in and then use reference lines to place them accurately afterwards. A lot of times I find that quicker if the windows vary in terms of their location. Six feet for the width for the window over here. And there's one over here as well. So for example this line needs to come down five feet four for this window and now I just move with O snaps from the in point there to the intersection there this one is in the same location so I can use the same line to move from in point to in point these are at four eight so I'm going to copy this line over four eight and then move this window down in point to in point and then this one's actually in the same location on the opposite side, so I'm going to erase what I had and mirror this um, so that the window is in the proper location. And then double check, distance command, and that is 48. So that's in the right spot. So there's my windows. I do need to um, add an entrance door. Let me make this 45 degree swing angle so that it looks closed or like it would normally be closed. And then let's add an entrance door. So hinge double and then six feet for the width and center is good and actually center is going to place this not centered in the overall opening when you use the center and offset options it will uh, take into consideration any walls that intersect the wall into which we're adding the door so it's seeing the closet door come in and it's centering it between the closet door and the corner and that's actually what i not don't want it to do this time usually i would um, but since I don't now, I'm going to find the center of this uh, niche using a temporary line and then the midpoint. And now I can move it down with that square grip so that it's right on that midpoint line. So that's an easy way to get your center. So now that looks better. So there's my first floor. Again, if you wanted to continue with cabinets, you could draw lines uh, in the same manner or use the design center cabinets. But that's the basics of doing a simple floor plan. Now, in another video, I can continue this and add stairs and things like that, but um, we'll save that for another day.